I think before we get started, can we just take a moment to just ground the people and some of this goodness that you were speaking to on the track? I sure can. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother Aristotle uh, for that, that production that was blessing the, the airway on your way in. But uh, I'm going to pass it on to you. So I'm going to just invite everybody to just take a moment to center into this very present moment, the magic that's in this moment right now. So wherever you might be, whatever you might be doing, Let's take a moment to just focus on your breath and take a beautiful, nourishing, deep breath in. And exhale fully. And as you breathe in again, 
Just breathe in all that is good in your world. Breathe it in deep. And as you exhale, just let that goodness settle into your body. And another deep breath in, fully and strong. And exhale, letting that goodness soak into your blood, into your body, into your bones, down to your DNA, absorbing all the nourishment that is yours. We breathe in this moment for those who couldn't. We standing here with love in our hearts, with truth on our tongue, with justice on our mind, for us to be able to transform our conditions, transform our reality, and end the legacy of oppression that is all too rampant in America. So as you are joining us today, we trust that you are here with good hearts, with open minds, ready to have these conversations for change. And I invite you to just set an intention for this moment. What is it that you might wanna create, manifest, walk away from after these conversations? And just take a moment to just set that intention and take a deep breath into that intention and exhale fully. Giving thanks, y'all. Yes, yes, uh, Shay. <clears throat> Before we continue, um, I just want, really just want to give a, a shout out of gratitude to all the collaborative partners that that really made this possible. You know, shouts out to the Black Cultural Zone, who we are uh, proud collaborative partners of. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, shout out to the Oakland Museum. Shouts out to the Oakland Art Murmur. Uh, RBA Creative, um, all the people that you know helped put this stream, the Streamyard uh, event together, uh, but working behind the scenes currently. Too many people to name, and all of you that are joining us uh, this evening because your, your energy matters, you matter, and uh, most importantly, the artists. I remember uh, when we did the town hall, I want to say about a week ago, week and a half ago or so. Um, a lot of folks were interested in what the artists had to say. They were like, well, you know, I, I hear what y'all are doing, but, you know, where the artists at? So uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just grateful that we we're able to, you know, get together with some with some some beautiful people, some beautiful voices to share some beautiful art with y'all. So uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and press forward. Mm -hmm. So this collaboration as we're getting ready for our artists is Part of that collaboration with the Oakland Museum, Black Cultural Zone, Oakland Art Murmur, RBA Creative. And we've been working through this summer to really preserve and honor protest art. We started this work as really a conversation to really recognize that this is a, a moment in time that is part of our history and legacy as African people in this country. We really wanted to honor that work. And so we began by starting to uh, intervene when business owners were taking panels down uh, to really find a safe space to be able to host these um, these uh, uh, panels that were uh, adorned with messages of resistance, messages of um, justice, calls for um, for really to center Black lives in this movement around uh, art and culture, and this movement around um, making our lives matter in a really intentional way. And so we uh, had the honor and privilege of supporting some of that work. Uh, and there are so many people that have um, been active in the preservation efforts around the nation. We've been, uh, you know, folks in New Orleans are doing this work, folks in DC are doing this work, folks, mm -hmm. you know, all around in Portland, Portland that are doing this work. Mm -hmm. And there's so many um, elements of, that are coming to the forefront around how it is that we really want to honor this time. Mm -hmm. And I just want to borrow. And also preserve our narrative, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, being able to, to to tell it from our perspective and our point of view, because, you know, it's, it's important. You know, I know when we first got into this, you know, there was talks about, you know, taking everything to the Smithsonian. And we was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What, you know, we mm -hmm. right? We, we don't have to take anything anywhere. Let's, let's let it stay here and let it thrive and let, let our stories be told. So that was also just another um, exciting aspect of, of, of this work. Yes. And one other thing I wanted to add uh, from Mama Asharo, who talks about artists as first responders. 
And so we recognize that, you know, the role of art and culture is central to every movement, central to every resistance struggle, central to every civil rights movement. And so this is timely right now for art to be central to this movement that we're in right now where Black lives do matter, right? In this movement right now where we want justice for Brianna, justice for George Floyd. And so we just wanna just take a moment actually to really just honor that this moment that we are in is because of the loss of black lives and because of the loss of, of black and the attack on black bodies, black and brown bodies. And so I just want y'all to just take a moment, just a, a moment of silence for all those who have lost their lives, who have been killed at the hands of state sponsored violence Let's just take a moment to honor their lives. Thank you. So as we take this energy of what are they wanting to honor those that have come before us. We're about to honor this moment of the now with having a beautiful conversation with amazing artists that have contributed to this movement, who have contributed their art, their talent, and their heart to really wanting to transform the landscape and the conversations uh, around what it means to center Black lives in our resistance movement right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, um, just if you could, uh, if you feel a move, just just go ahead and type in the chat. You know, we can get the feedback on this side. Just kind of, just how are you feeling in this moment? You know what I mean? Just in this moment with, you know, we're on the eve of the election. We're on the, so many changes, so much happening in, mm -hmm. in society. Just, you know, where are you at in this moment? You know, yeah. go ahead and put it in that chat. And that'll also be the time where you can, um, as questions we do our, our introductions of our artists, that's also an opportunity that you can use to uh, ask questions of our artists so that um, you can have a real time conversation in this moment uh, mm -hmm. for those who are on the live on the YouTube, on um, Black Cultural Zone's YouTube channel. So we're looking forward to this. Yeah. I mean, and shameless plug, since we're talking about the Black Cultural Zone, uh, Coma Market yeah. every Sunday. Um, last uh, Sunday, due to weather conditions, it wasn't activated. But every Sunday, y'all, we need you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just a beautiful exchange of energy, um, especially to just see it thriving and happening in East Oakland. is just, to me, just beautiful. I mean, we put a lot of energy by the lake, a lot of energy, you know, in that downtown area. But to, to really have this market thrive and be birthed right here on 73rd and Foothills, is just, it's just an honor to be a part of that that process and see it from the ground up. So shouts out to everybody that, that has been putting in uh, sweat equity, uh, resources, you know, prayers, you know, everything, everything matters. So um, as well as, the, you know, folks out there on the food distribution, you know, just continuing to serve the people and, you know, just 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 the vibrancy of what we're building out there. So. We're just really giving thanks. And, you know, I think we're about ready to get into this. I think so. All right. All right. I think we got some amazing <clears throat> artists we want to share with y'all. Cool. Well, well, first up, I think we got uh, my brother. Uh, this, this is a personal, personal friend of mine, my brother John B., also known as Chemist, who uh, was definitely one of the first folks out there uh, in the downtown area, especially by the police station, just, just throwing up and, and doing his, his, his work. I'm, I was going, I'm going to back up, man, just let you go ahead and let, let the folks know what, what time it is. Yes, 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 yes peace. Uh, my name is Kimis 510. Uh, like Brother Sway said, others know me as Brother John B. Um, I'm an aerosol artist, spray can artist, Otherwise known as a writer, uh, some people misfortune, unfortunately misinformed, call it graffiti, but that's not what we call it, we call it writing. That's the art world I come from. Um, and being that we write on things, it was only natural that um, I was inspired to actually go out and paint on surfaces that were being boarded up, uh, they were being uh, marked on, 
um, by you know people that weren't really from our community at all and um, really didn't have our interests in mind when they were doing so. And so being that I'm a writer, like I said, and a local artist and also a local community uh, activist um, and youth development specialist, um, I went out with the youth, uh, one of which was my son, um, other young people who are now adults who are um, you know from East Oakland and West Oakland and North Oakland, who all came out and also painted. So uh, a lot of the stuff you're seeing here is, is my personal work, but what was more um, inspiring and more amazing was seeing all the young people come can't come out and actually support and or paint their own work. So a lot of black and brown unity walls, a lot of walls that were centered around um, the names and the faces and the actual beings that have been taken from us uh, due to systemic racism. So. That's pretty much uh, my inspiration for going out and painting the boards uh, and just being hopefully a, a, a part of the transformative change that comes with visual discourse through a spray can. And I mean, like you say, what what, what was you, you said you, you you was doing a lot of the, the work in the you know, what were some of the areas where you were doing some of that work with the black and brown unity? Because I think that piece is missed and I'm glad you, you lifted that up. and. Um, you know, I just I just know we're all allies out here, and and you know, you know, it's it's just I think that narrative gets gets skipped over sometimes. Word. Um. So it was actually interesting. Um. The block that we painted on, number one, it was close to the police station, and then two, um, actually the block we painted on was black owned, and so the reason why we went out there is because folks actually seen that before. You know, all the protests, I'd already been out there painting on on wood boards and things of that nature, and so they was like, "Yo, could you actually help?" Because you know, this block is black owned, it's been getting hit. I said, "Of course," and so um, I actually expanded that. Uh, territory by actually painting on other surfaces that were also getting hit. And the young, the youth that came out with me and the young adults, they also started hitting like, you know, the Metro PCS uh, building and other stores that were around there. And so you'll see uh, black and brown unity walls right across the street from these actual walls you see on the screen here. Oh man. Well, hey, they're telling us we got about 30 seconds. We, I, I want to get a little deeper when we get uh, everyone in here on this panel discussion. And um, love you, King. And uh, so, so proud of you, man. Just just see you out here thriving. So we'll tap back in soon. Yeah, thank you. we got it for sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. I think that one of the things that's really important is that there's so many people that have been in this mix. Some folks who are relatively new to art and artwork, but also folks who are, um, you know, been in the game for a long time. But right now, the sister Rachel right here has got some <laughs> skills for you. Rachel, please talk to us. Tell us who you are, what kind of art you like to do, and um, a little bit about what inspired you to go out and paint around this time. So my name is Rachel Goldsmith. I have been in Oakland for about 10 years now, and I'm the creative director for the Bay Area Mural Program as well. Um, you know, I was just doing what we already do. We just paint, you know? Um, so driving through, I was out the night of the first uprising and seeing everything happen. It was really intense. Um, there was a lot of violence, a lot of intense energy, a lot of, you know, uh, it was everyone's blood is boiling. Like you could feel it in the air. And it was such a necessary moment to have that uprising and then to come out the next day already seeing people painting on stuff. Um, you know, I, I'd paint in the back of my car and I just posted up a Bissap Baobab and did one of the boards there. That's the one that um, is on the screen right now. Um, but, you know, it's just, it couldn't be a more important time to be putting out visual reminders and messages, um, reminding people, you know, to be present in this moment, not to look away from it, not to try to forget what's going on. And um, been working with the Bay Area Mural Program with younger artists doing uh, memorial pieces for people who have died at the hands of police violence, um, doing other pieces, dreaming about our future, um, you know, really trying to impart skills to youth as well. And bring up a whole other generation of black artists. Um, you know, it's definitely a shame to see people not knowing where to find black artists when there's this kind of moment going on. And so um, it's really a blessing to work with BAMP and to, you know, have so many young artists around us and to be able to share skills and share 
things that took, you know, 10 or more years to learn myself. Um, so yeah, man, I think, I think that's about, about it. So talk to us a little bit about, um, the work that you're doing with young people and kind of the work of, of BAMP as well, too. We'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so on my, on my partnership, I try to allocate a certain part of my budget every time to bring on a young aspiring artist and to give them experience driving a lift. And, you know, we'll be rapping about how do you do contracts? How do I negotiate with people? What's a good amount to ask for? You know, so trying to create that relationship and be a resource um, that people can come work with me and also that they can use me as a resource if they are wrapping with a client and they need advice or anything like that. Um, and then with the BAMP we're doing, we're now because of COVID recording classes and trying to offer um, some free classes and some affordable classes for people who, you know, there's nothing, everything on YouTube is all white people. So we're just creating that alternative as far as um, video tutorials and stuff like that with a little more flavor and um, yeah. Um, so we were also doing a lot of in-person classes, spray paint, brush classes with all ages, doing mural classes. And we're just kind of reevaluating what that looks like with COVID going on. Dope. Nice. Uh, you know, if you could maybe share that link, maybe in our chat box and they, and they could shoot it out to the YouTube link. You know what I'm saying? I know some folks, you know, would love to have access to that. So yeah. Give thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel. We definitely honor you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your work. And so the next artist that we're going to bring up um, is... Uh, Actually not here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're still going <laughs> to honor uh, the work of uh, Timothy B. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe my brother Joel is just kind of setting us up in the back. So, you know, giving thanks. And, you know, like you say, um, just really honored to be able to get the artists on that we have. Cause like Rachel said, you know, it's like, where, where are the black artists? It's, it's kind of a weird question to ask, but it is kind of like, dang, yeah, where is everybody? I mean, obviously when you're in it, you're, you're in it and you know, but um, there's a lot of art out there that, you know, we just didn't know was being done by us, you know? So um, just giving thanks for that. I mean, look at this going in. Yeah. Beautiful. So one of the things in our preservation efforts that we also found um, is that there were so many um, artists that came out um, and not all of them were black artists and not of all, all of them were, um, you know, even ready to spread messages around uh, the movement that we were in. Some of them were just artists who are ready to just come have a blank wall and blank canvas and paint. And so what we recognize is that it's really important for us to really center uh, the movement here um, around Black artists and Black lives, because that's what's happening, right? And so this next artist we're about to bring up is Blaine, uh, just another beautiful soul, beautiful spirit in this work, who really is a really talented uh, sister here in, in the Bay Area. So Blaine, tell us a little bit about who you are, the work you like to do, and uh, what inspired you to um, do this piece right here in particular. All right. Uh, yeah. So my name is Blaine. I'm an illustrator. I'm based on Treasure Island in San Francisco. Um, I usually paint portraits, human figures, really just anything with human bodies and expressions. I'm really interested in capturing just the intensity of human emotions that we experience every day that are kind of overlooked. And oh. The inspiration for this mural, the story is kind of different than the previous two artists. I had never painted a mural before. I actually went to Oakland with a couple of friends to help clean up after the protests. And uh, there was a lot of paint. People were doing murals. But the people that were organizing the cleanup efforts, they were like, just, you know, you can just paint white paint over whatever graffiti uh, that you see and so i saw this wall that just said black lives matter just like i mean written with like no art or anything it was just like spray canned over and i just was like it would be a shame if i just painted white over this and walked away 
So I decided to keep the message that was already on there, but I wanted to add to it. So we painted white over the whole thing. And then I just started looking at, you know, different portraits for inspiration on my phone, just like photos of African models and kind of just, I, I really wanted to paint something with very distinct, like central and West African features. Um, because that's something that you always see that's missing from a lot of art, especially from my background, like going to like design school, like you don't see a lot of those in references and in institutional art. So I always try to include those features in my artwork when I can. So yeah, that's uh, that was inspiration behind this, this mural. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, like I appreciate the element that you added around, um, you know, just recognizing the different features of folks that are here uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the why that is important to you personally to make sure that uh, continental Africans are, are represented mm. in this work? Yeah. So uh, my parents are from Ethiopia. I was born and raised in, in the United States. But uh, I, I noticed that there's like a lot of bias, especially in the East African community, where there's this sort of separation of, I mean, it's a combination of like colorism and like, you know, the separation of those who have more Arab features, more light skin, European features. And there's this like part of his inferiority complex and superiority and colonial. And it's like this whole like psychological mess. But what ends up happening as a product of all of that is darker skin, broad cheekbones, broad noses, those features kind of get pushed to the side. So and I am trying with my art to just more delve into that and make it seem like it's a normal, beautiful thing to exist. Black is beautiful. Indeed. Good. Like that, that's basically what you say. Black is beautiful. Yeah. And I feel you, man. It's, it's deep, right? Just dealing with colorism. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so happy that you shared that story from a continental. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we, we hear that story so much here as brothers and sisters in America. But it's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? We, we're struggling with it and the impact. So thank you. That, that, that story definitely resonated with me. We're going to bring you back in, uh, for the panel. So uh, looking forward to building with you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next up, we got uh, Kaya Fortune. He's not here. Oh, he's not here. Oh, okay. I think there were some technical difficulties with folks getting onto the link. Okay. Uh, so, Kaya, we definitely honor you. We appreciate mm -hmm. you as well. And I had the privilege of talking to Kaya and, um, you know, just talking about his, his inspiration and just kind of some of the work he was doing. He was also doing a lot of work in San Francisco, mm -hmm. who, you know, I, you know, we've been so caught up in what was happening in Oakland that, um, you know, we didn't really kind of think of consider that and you know we're excited to actually incorporate some of those pieces into uh this future mural project that we have coming up Shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> but right now we want to honor cc uh we appreciate your work come on into this fold and conversation welcome 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 again tell us a little bit about you what you love to do and what has inspired you to do these amazing pieces right here wow um yes Thank you for having us tonight. And it's an uh, honor to actually see the faces of the other artists whose work I've only seen um, on the walls. So this is quite um, a treat for me too. Um, this pieces that was created, I mean, we painted a bunch in Oakland, um, downtown Oakland, but we were actually already in plan um, of painting prior to the mass mobilization, prior to the uprising, um, because we already saw that a lot of small businesses, um, people of color businesses were closed and some of our folks have already asked me, um, I'm part of a collective called Trust Your Struggle. And they've asked us to, you know, add some colors in this really gloom state that we're in in the midst of the health pandemic. And so we were getting started and talking to folks and kind of figuring out um, some imagery. And right as we were getting started, the uprising and George Floyd was brutally murdered um, by the police. And we knew, or I knew that whatever image that we're gonna put out there has to kind of really make this connections. Um, and as part of the indigenous diaspora, I know that our fight is able, I mean, we're here and we're able to be here and we're able to fight this fight because of the black liberation movement and wanting to show solidarity um, with our black communities in, in this moment in time. Um, 
But this work, you know, um, is to show that, to show solidarity in communities of color. And I feel that is very important that we really um, imagery and visually say we have each other's back, especially at this time where we are, you know, the vulnerable communities, both economically, um, in health, and who has access to what resources. Um, so it was really important for us to create images out in the public um, to show that to show that we have each other's back and that we're here and we're here to fight and we're here to defend Black lives because you know without the Black Liberation Movement, our fight wouldn't be here. Um, we wouldn't be here to be able to fight our fight. So these are several different pieces. Um, this one's specifically in Fruitvale, but the other ones are in Oakland. And there's a bunch more. We kind of just went off, um, but these ones are the ones that I've painted. So that's, that's a little bit of me and my work. Nah, I'm, I'm feeling like you. I'm, I'm happy making the connection to everyone's faces and, and like, ooh, I, ooh, you did that. Like when I saw that the second one, I was like, ooh, that's I, I was looking at that one. And even like the one that Rachel did with the, uh, the system with the the, the, the breath around her. Mm -hmm. I was, it, it's just I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm feeling that same sentiment right now in this line, and I think it's just beautiful that we was able to connect tonight. So thank y'all, and um, yep, um, it's, it's resonating. I think at this point, um, forgive me if I'm wrong, Joel, but are we bringing everyone together for the uh, for the panel discussion? Yeah. Oh. So here we all are. This uh, the stage right here. Um, really appreciate each one of your thoughts, your work, your contribution uh, to this amazing um, time that we're in. So see each other's face, give each other some love. This is this is this is this moment in time. And those folks that weren't able to make it today, uh, Timothy B and Kaya, and there's so many other artists, like each one of y'all are connected to so many other beautiful artists who have also contributed to this work. And so we just taken a little bit of minute to really just uh, to honor them as well too. So thank y'all, thank y'all, thank you. For sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, uh, what was it like for y'all to, and even in this moment, how y'all feeling in this very present moment to just see each other's faces and connect dots? Some folks we haven't seen in a while, especially because of COVID. What's it like to be on this in this conversation with each other right now? How y'all doing? Go ahead and just jump in. All good. <laughs> we'll be polite if we start talking over each other. I, I think it's pretty, I mean, for me personally, it's pretty amazing because I, this is the first time I've ever created any public art and I got so much, like, people have been so kind and I've gotten so many emails and messages and, like, I'm so used to just creating art in private. I, I had no idea that there was this community around it. Like, I had no idea. <laughs> Where that's actually one of the reasons why I reached out to you is because I kind of had that sense that this was a new uh, place for you to be in, right? A new contribution and a new expression of your art. And so really just recognizing that there's folks who've been doing this for a long time, folks that this is their life, and folks have been doing it in their own kind of way, right? In their own special way as, as brilliant artists as we all are. And so, you know, really just thankful for this, you know, the layers and levels that we're at. Go ahead, Rachel, you were gonna add something as well? Yeah, it just, it feels beautiful to be here. I've taught with Chemist before. Um, I've had the pleasure of working side by side with him. And it's just beautiful to meet the other artists behind the work that I have seen and um, and to be in creative community with y'all. So, thank you, yeah. Definitely, I, I definitely know that uh, for me it's an honor. I love the fact that it's all sisters. Um, usually when I'm painting, and unfortunately, with spray can art, um, this you know, spray can culture sometimes is dominated by males. So, um, it can be frustrating just because the creativity a lot of times is high from a male perspective. So, just being able to see the women that have been creating is, is dope for me. Um, I second so much of what folks have said, and I think it just reconfirms like how much talent Oakland has. 
and um, the more pride that we have um, for, I mean, I live right here in Oakland and I feel like I know a good chunk of a good number of artists that are here, um, but I'm constantly still seeing new faces and it's a beautiful thing to see that we're consistently expanding. Um, but also not just like, not just like regular artists, you know, but artists with messages. And I think that's <clears throat> a kind of really important distinction in terms of anyone could throw something up on the wall, but if we're throwing up some to mark the moment in time to see the vision of the world we live in, um, then we get so much more closer to that very place. And, and I'm excited to be able to meet folks and to be able to build with folks and create with folks about type of world that we want to make. I, I mean, I know we're always creating and, you know, we're, we're all artists in our own right, but do you have any current work that you, you know, is, is in, in the mix right now or any ideas of, of anything coming up? Um, Go ahead, Rachel. what you got? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, um, we actually, um, I finished uh, a huge mural in an abandoned building right here on the tracks at, between 23rd and 22nd on East 14th um, with four women artists and as well. And I want to shout out their name, Priya Honda, Frankie Gomez, Dime. Um, in collaboration with Miss Regina Evans um, and the House Full of Black Women to honor our young sisters on the streets um, that we call beloved gifts to know that they are seen and they are loved. So it's up. Um, we're going to be continuously doing a lot of programs and offerings and altars um, to honor the young women out there, because that was created for them, but to also just um, really expand the awareness that this women that are out on the street and, you know, we're still in the midst of this health pandemic, um, the rates of infection with this women are still greatly high and that, and that, you know, and that is not okay. Um, but we created this mural um, to give visibility to those who are kind of been put aside and been invisible and just, you know, right here in East Oakland. So when you get a chance going, peep it out. Is that the piece that's right like on maybe 90th or 80? No, it's between East 23rd and 22nd on East 14th International. Okay, okay, got it, got, got, got it, yep. Right by East Side Arts Alliance. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We know yeah. Exact, exactly where that is. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's why I'm, I'm actually glad I asked the question because it kind of speaks to um, the movement and not a moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Is that, you know, just, just the fact that we're continuing to put messages out, continuing to use our platform to, to raise awareness. So, you know, for people that don't know, go check it out. You know, CC just put it out there. Like, like check us out, y'all. Let's, yeah. let's, 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 let's. Uh, address this, you know what I mean? I got some music coming out uh, and we're going to be addressing some things in, in the future, man, because it's, it's, we're at that point, you know what I mean? And that, I think that's the beautiful thing about really hearing hearing y'all voices right now. Um, let the people know, yo. T tell them what's up. Talk to them. Yeah. Talk to them. Rachel, you have some new projects you're working on? Yes, I do. So, um, I just got off, actually right before this, I got off um, the phone with a nonprofit that's gonna bring me out to DC to do a mural envisioning black woman Supreme Court justices. So we're gonna be creating a mural, um, a really large mural, like eight blocks from the White House before the confirmation of the next Supreme Court judge kind of envisioning this. And so my vision is to bring a couple of women with me from Oakland to help execute this project. So that's super, super juiced. <clears throat> um, and I've just really been feeling like in this moment, the power of like creating the future through images, right? Like I feel like we're 
headed towards this black mirror like weird white supremacist shitty sci-fi future where computers rule everything and we're all disconnected and i'm like whoa 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 like i look through netflix and i'm like is this really what we're all dreaming like this is the best we can do <laughs> you know like nah so i think that's our role <laughs> now, seeing more black creators in roles in making films and um just like more expansive storytelling and storytelling that isn't all based on the doom and gloom and disconnection but storytelling that's actually based on what we really want like what cc is saying you know what what is the world we want to create so writing those stories on walls changes people's ability to write themselves into that story you know so um so that's Absolutely. what i'll be on um yeah, yeah, and then I have some other local projects in Oakland I'll be returning to. Um, and all of those I'm focusing on kind of, I wanna use models from my life, um, you know? So kind of creating those narratives by using people who are a part of my life and my world and all the beautiful people in Oakland and giving people their flowers while they're here, you know? Dope. It looks like the they're gonna be adding some questions. It looks like there's some questions coming in from YouTube. So uh they should be coming in pretty soon. But um I love what you're saying around aspirations and possibilities. Like can we dream, you know, beyond what we see right now? Like what are we creating? Mm -hmm. I know um art when we're seeing these visuals, when we're seeing this, this magic in essence, right? This whatever we're taking out of our head and creating in this tangible world. I you know, I consider that magic, you know what I mean? Um it's just it's, it's it's beautiful to hear about possibilities and especially the proximity of where this mural is going to be, uh, the impact, right? The impact of that is going to be beautiful. So thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. And just popcorn, you know, just, just jump in as, as you see fit. Oh, okay. Actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, chemist, you wanted to tell us about the, um, the, the new planner boxes pieces that you, that you got going on. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I was I was just was sitting back. CC mentioned D May and a few other folks. That's actually my folks as well. And then Rachel was talking about some work that um, is really really uh, in the center of my heart. So it was just dope just to hear them sister speak. Um, in terms of my work, i um, definitely been doing a lot of local art centered around um, obviously black culture as always. Uh, done some work in the black cultural zone, which was my favorite work to do. Um, also, I've done some work for a local barber shop in East Oakland. Um, a lot of people don't really realize that seven, up to like 70% of black people in Oakland is home, are homeless. So um, we were, we deal with a lot of different uh, injustices in our community beyond COVID. And I think that because we can't put a mask on racism and walk around and protect it from it, um, it's kind of detrimental that some of the spaces that we live in actually get art too. So I've always been real big about painting in the hood. Um, and painting in places where you know a lot of people are scared to go. So um, got a couple of murals going there, and then also doing um, uh, commission work. Uh, they wanted to do something with a lot of artists around the country, uh, centered around like transportation and the slow streets. And so I partnered with um, a, a, a really beloved uh, East Oakland family that I know for a long time, uh, and some other folks, and actually came up with a couple art projects. One of which is uh, planter boxes. And I was trying to address like the food deserts in our community. Um, and so we don't have a lot of, you know, healthy options and we don't have a lot of access to health uh, in our community. So we figured that by building planter boxes and putting art that actually speaks to the healing and the justice uh, and the freedom that we want to see um, would actually pay reverence and reference to the things that you know we're trying to do in our own community. So we look at transformative change like Sister Rachel, Sister Cece and Sister Blaine were saying. Um, in the form of like a visual discourse. So everything that we paint is a conversation, but one that we hope people engage in direct action. So that's why we did the planner boxes. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, the concept is just so ill, um, Kevin. So I, I, when, you, when you told me about it, I was just like, man, this, that's just beautiful. I mean, uh, you know, shameless plug. I, I, I'm getting one right around the corner from us in the east. So it's, it's, it's just beautiful just to see it manifest and the people in the neighborhood are definitely going to appreciate it. And um, man, you know, if y'all got any suggestions around any uh, vegetables that y'all think we should plant, please put them in the uh, in the chat. I know we're moving into the uh, the fall season. So I'm, I'm brassica, you know, you know, some brassicas, you know what I'm saying? But uh, if y'all got any uh, info, please put it in the chat. Yeah. I want to come paint a box. 
<laughs> yeah, come on, come yeah. on. Speaking of that, uh, CCM brain. So one of the things that they were talking about, um, because it's also in conjunction with like the city of Oakland, right? So around the country, they do like these zooms where all the artists that they partner with around the major cities, DC, you know, all over. Um, we get a chance to kind of hear what each other is doing. Uh, and one of the things I overheard Oakland talking about is like the paint the town project that they do. Like they paint the, you know, the, the actual ground, like the cement. Uh, so I definitely mentioned Rachel. Uh, definitely always talk about Trust Your Struggle. That's folks, uh, known them forever. Um, but what was dope is that a lot of the, a lot of the people that I was mentioning in the meetings, they already knew. And so they wanted to reach out because, um, a lot of the stuff that I also was building is the like A-frame walls. And I was saying that, you know, this could be cool for artists that want to, you know, paint the town, but may not be able to come out. Um, they can actually paint it at home and then get it dropped off. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can paint it in the hood. You can paint it at the, at the house, at the BAM Center, wherever you want uh, to do it. So I'm definitely making sure that they replicate it in that fashion. Um, and, it's, and it's all built from local resources. Um, I didn't go to no real big corporations or nothing like that. And um, so everything's locally sourced. So they can't complain, they can't say they can't do it. So we're definitely gonna have that happen, Rachel. And I can bring panels to you if you wanna paint some as well. I like painting out in the street, man, so I'll come through. Come on, come on. Word, yeah. Connections. So Blaine, tell us about some of the projects you're working on, and then I got another kind of juicy question for y'all. Um, I actually got really lucky because after I painted the mural, I was contacted by the Black Joy Parade, and they wanted to um, be able to distribute prints and tote bags and stuff with the mural printed on it during the parade. And um, I definitely got like a lot more work just after I painted it because my social media like people kept emailing me so I, I was just like really surprised um because people were reaching out and asking like I got I mean they're, they're all like small jobs but it's just like to, to actually have people reaching out to you because on social media you spend so much time trying to market yourself but just going out publicly and painting that I had so many people like I, I was on the cover of um, like the East Bay Times and then people found me from that people were asking me to buy the mural like to just have it in their house and I didn't sell it but um, yeah so I have that and um, I got contacted to come to some art shows in San Francisco in the mission so yeah it's just like little things just keep popping up after I painted it so it's been just like a lot of good luck Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Ashe. I definitely think that there's a, a momentum that's happening um, in, the, in the time right now to really, like I said, using art as part of this conversation piece. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's actually what I wanted to ask y'all is, you know, many of us, we've already talked about like the concepts that we've shared, um, you know, the content, you know, looking at um, folks who have been, you know, sexually exploited or folks who are, you know, living in food deserts or, you know, just looking at our, you know, third world in indigenous struggles and how they're connected. What is your process around um, your own personal political education and how does that infuse your creative process um, as an artist? And I think that that, I mean, I'm kind of inspired, you know, around how art is part of the, you know, artist mm -hmm. making the, you know, the role of the artist is make the revolution irresistible, right? And so like, how, how how are we grounding ourselves in this revolution, like in our own hearts and minds? Like what is our, our thought process that we do that way? And then how does it infuse into our creative process? And anyone can jump in who's ready. I'll go and take a stab at it. Um, I think for myself, I mean, my kind of like, life path has, my whole life is is political. I mean, in terms of being a woman of color in the third world, being poor, um, and, and all of that culminated, I mean, is my life experience and the people around me has become my biggest sources of muses. And I think our lives, our struggles and our victory are beautiful and that inspires me. And so those are the images I've chosen to paint because that's what I know and that's what resonates with me. And to be honest, that's actually what's also connecting me to the rest of the world. Because the more we tell our story, the more folks come out and be like, 
I I get it. I feel you. So finally, someone's actually telling our sides of it, you know, um, because growing up poor, art, art is a privilege, you know? I mean, it's not like a intentional choice per se of like what my parents would have liked me to have done or what I've imagined to be doing if I really wanted to go make it in this American dream per se. And, um, and I wanna defy that. I wanna defy that, you know, that I actually believe that art is for everyone and that we all can um, find power in it and that, you know, it's all about values and what it is that, that we put our attention and value and time into. And, and I do believe that art is such a powerful force. I mean, it changes behaviors, it changes value, it changes politics. And I've seen that happen within my short lifetime, you know, and I feel like I've have been fortunate enough to contribute in some of the campaigns and some of other actions that actually you see that happen. It's not just this abstracted thing. I mean, culture is a very powerful tool to really make relevant, significant change in our society and it shouldn't be underestimated. Um, so just, just a brief summary. I mean, I think it's inevitable that the work that I'm gonna produce based on just the community I'm part of and the life I've lived in as a displaced immigrant, part of like the indigenous diaspora here in Oakland um, with such rich vital history of the movement. Um, that's, that's almost kind of one in one and I don't see them separate. Word, agreed, appreciate that. Yeah. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I drop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blaine, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I think for me, I mean, I've always done art ever since I was a really little kid, but so I went to school for industrial design. That's what I got my degree in. And that was really when I realized that, you know, I needed to use my, my political and personal knowledge to inform my design work because I realized like the, wor the world of product design is, is so white and so upper class and it's so far removed from what everyday people experience. And so as I'm going, I went to a private school. So I went to school with a lot of people who just, I mean, it's a whole different world, right? And then I realized like, okay, there's no voice here for people who grew up in a different way. So in my, in the middle of college up until my senior year, I, I decided that like all of my projects I was going to do either about like race or class because no one else was making those projects. So it was like a very intentional decision, even though I, you know, it, it definitely ruffled a lot of feathers, just like, you know, I, it, it showed me how, okay, certain teachers like, oh, they might not think they're racist or they might not think they're classist, but they've just never heard this perspective from any students before. And it was, I was one of two black women in my entire department, like the whole student body. So for me, I was like a really intentional decision. Like someone needs to say this stuff in a world where it's just not being talked about at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. And that's a hard place to be in, right? But it definitely takes a little bit of courage. So appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. appreciate y'all. Thank you. Um, I would love to hear from from Rachel and Chemist, but no, no, it's we, okay. we got I think time. We got, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought yeah. they was telling us to move forward. Okay, yeah. Like, like Rachel, like let me let me let, let me get in on this. All right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, man. Uh, you know, I have an interesting upbringing. I'm adopted into a white Jewish family. Um, so the family I'm adopted into, you know, my ancestors on that side are Holocaust survivors experienced a ton of trauma and discrimination um, and still, you know, suffer a lot to this day with mental health issues and effects from that. And then um, my birth father has been incarcerated since I was born. He's black and my birth mother lives just outside of the town I was born in. Um, and, you know, she was pretty young and pretty poor when she had me. And she's, you know, she still lives there with my two younger brothers. So I had this, I had a lot of different perspectives on life. In some ways I was raised, you know, I am, I have light skin and I have white parents. So I had this privilege. And at the same time, I was always different from everyone around me. I was not white. Everyone knew I wasn't white. So I didn't fit there either. Um, 
So, you know, and then my mom worked in homeless youth shelters and um, domestic violence shelters my whole life. So I always had this perspective of like, you live to serve other people and in serving other people like that, that's what life is about. You know what I mean? So, um, so I always had that perspective. And then just as an adult, I knew I wanted to be an artist. I kind of saw art as a way to live outside of this paradigm of of the same kind of oppressive reality that a lot of people get funneled into. Um, and then it became really clear to me that, you know, that art had to serve a purpose that was bigger than me. And um, and to me, like, I love Erica Badu, you know, hip hop is bigger than the government. It's like, it really is. And culture is bigger than the government. And what we do as people is bigger than the government. And so, you know, um, whatever kind of force that we can create through art, through creativity, and actually through creating economic opportunity for other people to come into the arts, to see like, you don't have to be a broke artist. I want to teach you how to get this money. I want to teach you what you need to have together to get this money and to be on top and to like be playing on the same fucking field as everybody else and not to have to do it their way, you know? And so I think we're in this moment also where we're able to market ourselves and, you know, other people identify with their stories that haven't been told, like Cece was saying, you know, it's like people want to see that. It's just the Eurocentric art world was holding everybody out and saying that doesn't matter. And it's like, no, it really does. And it matters to a lot of people. So, um, so building community around telling those stories, empowering people and, um, yeah, creating economic justice within the arts for black and brown people word up yes ashe mm -hmm. ashe i'm glad we extended this part yeah you know what i'm saying we definitely yes, want to hear yes. from you let that, the people know that is actually part of this point of like you know we want to hear what what uh what inspires y'all to do this work and particularly mm -hmm. as part of this movement of this work and so you know each one of y'all is, is is grounding us in that absolutely chemist you, you you the one come on tell us tell us your creative process your political education how they merge together. Um, just listening to them is, I mean, I, I get stuck. It's speaking, uh, speaking truth to power. So um, kind of like the same for everyone, like my lived experience definitely um, pushes a lot of my creativity, obviously, as a black person in America, but more importantly, just a black person in the diaspora. Um, so a lot of times um, looking at what other uh, black folks is doing around the world um, that I'm connected to. They do art, um, and in my art world, um, it's it's a lot easier to connect and build with with folks that's on the ground, so to speak. So most of us still work in the hood. Uh, most of us still make sure that we give back. Our whole like art form is is centered around momentary art. You know what I mean? And like really being in the moment, really being present, um, and present in that moment wherever that's at. And so for me. Um, in order to stay grounded, I make sure that I'm present around the young people. Um, I think for me to think about anything that's transformative or rooted in some type of change that's not poisoned by, you know, corporate greed, um, misogyny and things like that, um, I usually tap into the young people. So, you know, my son's 18 years old. Um, I work with nothing but young people. I work with young people since I was a youth. Um, and so, like you know, similar, you know, I have a lot of adopted cousins that, you know, um, my, my, my uncles and aunts back East adopted a lot of youth. So like Rachel was saying, I had a lot of youth in my family that grew up not in their biological family, so to speak. So when I was younger, I always, you know what I mean? was with my aunt and uncles helping them with my parents, helping them and helping my siblings too. So I think that just translated into, you know, adulthood, like Rachel was saying, like being around the foster care system, being around juvenile justice, being around, um, certain things that, um, you know, like sexually exploited minors, things that really a lot of people sh shy away from, especially in terms of helping. I think I ran towards that and, and wanted to help. So my parents always worked in the community. Um, you know, three quarters of my family worked in the community. So it was only right for me to do the same. And that just translated into all the work. And I think being African centered um, in everything that I do um, is primarily to combat, like Rachel was saying, and like Cece and Blaine said, is the Eurocentricity of America and really the globalization of that. And I think that um really tapping in being able to build with rachel like on, on not not like on no teaching level but learning level right like being in a space where i'm with trust or struggle and i go to miami to art basel and i link up with with bounce and the rest of the folks like you know uh, meeting blaine on this 
and knowing that I'm going to wind up paying with her sometime soon. I think for me, that's what grounds me is knowing that there are women, there are uh, men, there are folks who identify as whatever they identify as that look like me and are people of color and melanated that, you know, have the same frequency. Um, and she said, Erica Badu, come on. I mean, who does not like Erica Badu? Um, so, like I said, I mean, we we listen to music to ground us. Uh, we go to Mizan and Sway's house to eat vegetables out of the garden. Um, we might drink a smoothie and build a planter box. I think just for me, building with the people and truly being centered and intentional in everything that you do, because spirit works. That's how I ground myself. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, Shay, we love you, bro. Yeah. We love you, man. And and you know we, we give thanks, man. We we give thanks, and like you say, this is what it's about. The the med this is the medicine right here, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is the the relationship, the storytelling, the the this is this is also that work. You know what I mean? And I think when folks talk about that quote unquote healing work, you know what I mean? This is just a part of it. It's something this simple. I think sometimes we put so much on it. What that means mm -hmm. to healing community and being community, it's just the basic things we forgot. Like something as simple as this. So I really appreciate sharing the time with y'all. And uh, if you don't mind, we're gonna transition into um, some visual art. Uh, Mizan actually has some pieces in here, but uh, I had the privilege of working with my brother Shaka Jamal on a video called The Time Is Now. And um, you know, we got blessed with Kev Choice to do the score at the beginning. And uh, my father is on here playing the horn. Uh, my brother Kelly is on here with, with you know some background instrumentation as well. So like John actually got some artwork in here too. So yeah. it's, it's it's a family affair, and you know I just wanted to share it with the people because this is that time to use our art. You know what I'm saying, and, and our platform to really talk about what transformation looks like and what world do we want our babies and, and seven generations living in. So yes. with no further ado, uh, the time is now. Purging poison out of the system Frankincense on the charcoal Burn slow, breathe slow Stretch every muscle head to toe Water up, love my sons and daughters up Keep empress with enough to overfill a cup Plus she got yoga Gotta keep self straight so I can provide for them Your brothers inside for them And them without losing my movement My growth, my influence, my inspiration To do it, pursue it and follow through with the music Microphone in the students and family unit Communing with a few men and women I'm calling through in the mission to put it into the bullshit my people doing the now Carters and Newtons organizing for the future Thinking if not us then who else The mission is moving through us Praying the black Madonnas But act like they never knew us They foolish thinking that we would never return to the true us Yo, the Holocaust ain't only happened to the Jewish They knew this but every time we bring it up They misconstrue it Ain't trying to hear it My computer can't compute it Remove it, then reboot it Like I never even knew it Blood flowing, spear keep that ginger tiny brewing Moving, meditation I'll forever be a student Huh. I'll forever be a student Moving, meditation, I'll forever be a student Time is now When we gonna do it 
Now we gon' sit back, do nothing like we used to do. No. The time is now. The time is now. When we gon' do it, he'll sway. When we gon' do it, you know what? The time is now. Realize it takes courage and drive. I know you're nervous, still gotta nourish your eyes, your sight. I and I gotta flourish and thrive. That's right, hard to do when your hands is tied. The fight is inside, yo, you looking too wide. I was always looking out till my well ran dry. Oh well, live and learn, then discern your side. Master yourself, but life gon' start lashing your high. Stay in your lane, be careful not to crash in your ride. Be fam, but keep in mind who in the passenger side. Match with I and I, same passion and vibe. Imagine all we could do and provide if we tried. I swear you ain't never lied. Coincide with the the most high, my eye balance out both sides. Choosing life almost died. Gotta hold your family close. I, I, these days I, make I, you wanna keep the toes tied. Post make I, the brother I, wanna close both eyes. I, Everybody I, walk around closed. Why? Why? Everybody why? walk around closed. Why? The time is now. When we gon' do it? Are we gon' sit back? Do nothing like we used to do. No. The time is now, the time is now, when we gon' do it, he'll sway, when we gon' do it, you know what, the time is now. So that was The Time Is Now by Spear of the Nation, uh, filmed at the Experience Sankofa Project, uh, one of our offerings of art that we do uh, for the community uh, housed at Eastmont Mall. Uh, we opened just before COVID-19, shut everything down, and now we're in a space where uh, we can see about how we're going to continue to open that back up again. So the Experience Sankofa Project is a living museum that chronicles African history from the continent to present day Oakland. And so we recognize that uh, you may have seen lots of familiar faces in there, but it's really an immersive experience for us to really tap into um, our capacity to heal, to love, to transform, and to really understand what is our time right now? What is our time to do? Yeah. And I see um, we're getting some communication that we're just going to press forward. We had a break plan, but um, Joel, maybe we just kind of push through the break because it looks like this is going to be pre-recorded and posted to tap in a little later. Let's just go to that, to that check-in question. Thank you, sir. So as we have our artists coming back to join us, one of the things we were going to talk about and kind of vibrate on in our in our conversation is what is the time for right now? What is yours to do in this time? And so our artists, if you are here and that are, want to share a little bit about, you know, what's your inspiration or thoughts around how you would answer that question? What's yours? What's your what's yours to do right now in this time? I know we've already talked about the inspiration of the work that we are thinking about, but you know, what's your what's yours to do in this time? That's a big mm -hmm. question. <laughs> I feel like I've covered, you know, talking about what I'm doing with the community, what I'm doing artistically, um, what my vision is, you know, artistically as far as the the imagery that I'm putting out into the world. Um, Man, staying sane is a full-time job these days, <laughs> um, you know? So I feel like what's mine to do now is really to keep going and to, I think just just to keep going is like huge right now, um, just to stay balanced and to stay healthy, to stay engaged with the community, to stay engaged with my family and my loved ones and my partner and, you know, my body. Um, and so that I can stay nourished and continue the cycle of giving. 
Um, that's what feels really present to me right now. It's funny, you, you brought up a good point, right? Just around kind of what I heard was, you know, just staying sane. In, in that, what I heard was some self-care practices. Yep. So outside of the art, what, what are you, how are you maintaining? What are some resiliency uh, skills or practices that maybe you could share with the audience that are kind of helping you through this time? Um, I think like taking time in the morning instead of rushing out the door or instead of like, um, instead of, you know, just worrying about other people and my schedule and everything first thing in the morning, like taking that time to step outside into my backyard to ground out, to breathe, to actually just breathe, <laughs> um, to remember to breathe, to be like, do I want to drink coffee or do I need herbal tea, you know, to check in with my body. Like I've been experiencing, you know, I'll drink coffee and then I'll be like an anxious mess immediately. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So, you know, just re listening to my body. Um, I've been trying to like, I'm, I work crazy. Like I hurt myself on my last job because I was on my you know, 10th day of 12 hour days with no break and the fire and the smog and all that. So just remembering like I'm a person and it's okay to go home at seven and eat dinner and chill. <laughs> um, and, you know, just trying to like meditate, eat healthy and stay connected to the people I love and, you know, make sure that I'm like nourishing my relationships. Um, and that I'm expressing my emotions and not just holding them up and staying at home and, you know, yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being vulnerable in that moment. Yeah. Uh, anybody else want to share how they, how they stay insane in these times right now outside of the art? Like how are you taking care of yourself as artists? Or you can answer the first question about, uh, what what is yours to do? What time is you? What time is it right now? What's for you to do in this time of transformation? Uh, I think it's just on um, to answer the the first question about like what is it time to do personally for me right now? I think I just I'm trying to find more community. Um, as, on Treasure Island, uh, it gets pretty isolated, especially because of like COVID and everything right now. So I've just been trying really hard to like reach out and find people on social media and just like, yeah, just like get in touch with people because I'm learning now that creating art as part of a group or part of a movement is just, it's like, it's medicine uh, compared to just sitting in your room and just like painting all day, which is cool, but like you go kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, I think we live in such interesting time right now. I mean, things have shifted and the world have changed, you know, and we have such an amazing potency to kind of figure out what change that would be um, as, as, as difficult and as challenging <laughs> it is. Um, and I do believe that what, as far as what to do right now is to just really keep on creating and really keep imagining because more than ever, it's just so much more necessary to, to kind of really imagine what it is on the other side of this tunnel because we're still in it, we're deep in it, you know? Um, and I think both what, what Rachel and, and, and and folks that says just really important to um, really strengthen those connection with, with social distancing and all these different things that is in protocol because of this pandemic. Um, I know that I cope with when I'm most vulnerable through my community, through my friends, through my family. So being creative and being innovative and in how we do that and, and, and stay healthy, I think is, it's just as important as as painting on a wall. Because um, essentially I feel like I'm painting things for the love of my peoples and, and those peoples are the one that feeds me. So it's just this 360 um, gift giving, receiving in, in, all, in all of its spectrum. And um, so in order for me to be able to continue doing this work, I need to go and feed the folks and the things um, 
and bring attention to those things that is allowing me to keep creating. But but I do believe that, and I and I I strongly believe that um, now more than ever is where we really put our heads together and imagine, you know, elections coming up and and we're still in phase one or phase two of this pandemic and economy's going down. Um, and 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 I know that we deserve more, and we should we should have more, and we can create more, and 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 we can do that. I love that. I love how you lifted up the element around the reciprocity with the people. Mm -hmm. I think that that's such a beautiful uh, way to look at you know just the way that we do this art from our heart. Like it really mm -hmm. is a a a a. a, a so uh what's the word i'm looking for not collaborative process but like a collective process you know it feeds each other it sustains it's self-sustaining and that it's self-regenerating right that we you know the energy that we give by doing you know the work by supporting our people by telling our stories by speaking our truth mm -hmm. you know is allows us to continue to speak our truth and tell our <laughs> stories you know what right, i'm saying right, so just right. the you know that level of reciprocity so mm -hmm. thank you for that I mean, I am because we are, yes. you know, when I, when I hear that, I think, you know, we have these sayings, you know, in La Kesh, you know, we have all these, these terms throughout history that just connect us. But when you hear things like that, you see how real they are. You know, they're, they're not just words, but they really are ways of life, culture. And at, at the root of us all, I, I know humanity believes that, Yeah. that, you know, we are definitely reflections of each other and we definitely need each other. So. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What, what up? What up, JB? Um, I think for me, uh, what definitely grounds me, and I I noticed what grounds a lot of adults, um, is just being around young people. Um, for me particularly, uh, just being around young people in terms of like solutions. Um, unfortunately, we have to connect on Zoom, so really pushing to do a lot more you know, murals or any type of outside artwork. Um, I think what grounds me is being able to actually provide access to, to different resources for youth, um, especially if it's just something as simple as a spray can or you know a bag with canvases and, and paint in it. I think um, when all this started happening, all this COVID stuff, um, we already were dealing with racism and poverty, everything that's attached to racism. And I think for the young people to be smacked in the face with COVID and not being able to graduate in person, not being able to go to prom, not being able to go to funerals, not being able to go see um, relatives and things of that nature, and then being like ridiculed for embracing one another in the in the public, when in reality, I mean, most, most folks don't really have access to healthcare. So if they get sick, um, you know, they don't have access to healthcare. So they look at it like, well, at least I could be around my folks if I do get sick. So just watching that happen for so many months and watching people risk their health just to have, you know, regular life, you know what I mean? Where they can embrace one another. Um, I think that was, all, it wasn't heavy for me. It was grounding for me because I knew that people were still human. Um, in the video, uh, the brother was saying, you know, why are you so closed? And I think um, that really, stuck with me just because for me to be grounded is just to watch young people be so open, watch elders be so open and to talk to us about how we can sustain our immune systems right now, telling us things that we grew up knowing, but some weren't paying attention to, or well, now everybody is. And I think, you know, looking at the API community and watching how they, they've been wearing masks for mad long and now everybody's wearing them, but then they get, you know, they got ridiculed and, you know, and a lot of prejudice is thrown at them. Um, watching how Latino people have always been essential in terms of a lot of the work in California. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're essential workers. So it's just interesting, but it's grounding for me. Cause again, I, I just get to see that, you know, with all the contradictions, we still have a community that collectively is using their spirit to, you know, to work through everything. So I think for me, just being around folks like y'all in situations like this, uh, like Rachel said, actually eating food with my son, not in the car or not, you know, um, you know, outside on the bench, but actually at a table um, for a change, you know, it's been refreshing being able to sit down at the square and get on our square. Um, it's just been a good one for me. So um, I definitely don't like to complain during these times just because as an artist, I'm able to go out and actually have a voice on any surface. And a lot of um, people don't realize they can do the same. So I think that just, you know, hearing these sisters talk and then knowing that I'm a, a, a attached to a community that's speaking like this, you know, that's, that's, that's the grounding I need to keep going. 
Nice. Nah, good thanks, John. Yeah. <laughs> good thanks, brother. I like what you said just around essential workers and just language be so funny, man. Just how language is thrown around and just the convenience of how it could tell a story at a certain time. Right. It's just, it just blows funny, man. But we do want to get into some of these questions that we have from um, the audience and people that are watching. And um, I think, <clears throat> let's see. I'm just going to read them. Uh, has your work opened up any new opportunities to create work not connected to the Black Lives Movement? And um, for the sisters on here, do you feel that the recognition of your work is creating more respect for you and your practice? And I can repeat any part of the question if you need. Just read, just read. Part again? Yeah. Just say it again. Say it again? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Has your work opened up new opportunities to create work not connected to the Black Lives Movement? <clears throat> and basically, for the for the women on here, for the for the for the ladies, um, how do you um, do you feel like your work has expanded since you you since there's more exposure around your work right now with this um, moment? You know, this this movement work. Um. Yeah. So. I don't know, my work didn't change. Like, I don't feel like my subject matter is that different from what I would normally want to create. Um, just because a lot of my work, you know, I think a lot of artists start off painting themselves. And so I'm a black woman. So I've, you know, I've been interested in people from all over the spectrum, from brown to black. Um, sometimes I've even painted white people, but um, you know, for the most part, my work has been pretty centered in that story um, anyways. So I guess it's more political at this moment. It's more about what, what the fight is about or about bringing joy in the time of this fight and, you know, really being more intentional about, um, about all of that, but there is no separation for me. Um, and then, uh, yes, there's absolutely been more um, attention around my work. And I also feel like it's a coalescence of 10 years of um, really just diligent and nonstop, you know, no weekends, no parties, no, I wasn't doing the shit that my homies were doing. You know, I was, I was grinding and trying to figure out a made a way to make it work. So um opportunities that were already aligned for the summer, then, you know, the net, what I decided to bring to that project changed because of the conversation that is going on right now. And um, because of that, I have been, you know, sought out more than ever before um, to the point where I'm able to spread that work around to other people. So that's been pretty cool. Thank you for lifting that up around. I've been building with Mizan around that lately, like, you're not really, you, you're looking at like 20 plus years. You're not looking at this moment in time. You know what I'm saying? As far as work put in and things of that nature. And I think sometimes when we see beautiful art, we, we, we forget how much time and how much practice and how much dedication yeah. to getting the right color sequences <laughs> to get in the right. I mean, it's just so much. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you lifted that up just as a recognition of the, 1,000 hours, 1,001 hours, 10, oh, excuse hours, me, yeah, yeah. 10,000, look, excuse me for cutting it short, 10,000 <laughs> hours, right, that, that goes into this uh, mastery of a skill, so um, thank y'all for lifting that up, and I'm just going to open it up to anyone else who wants to speak on it. Similarly, I mean, I feel like this is the work I've always been doing. Um, I was doing this, I mean, we've just in downtown Oakland alone, um, we've already painted the faces of Oscar Grant and Trayvon Martin and messages about Michael Brown. So this didn't happen just when George Floyd and Breonna Taylor was murdered. You know, this has been accumulation of years and years of work. Um, and it wasn't because, oh, everyone else is doing it. No, we, we've been there. We've been out on the street for a long time, um, painting messages and images of our people. Um, but yeah, I think now political art is cool. And now like, you know, everyone's on the hype, um, which 
I'm hoping it's not just a trend. And and you know, definitely there's been I've I've turned down job opportunities from big corporate because he wasn't aligned within my political vision. And now our political vision is becoming to be what's cool and trendy in some ways like, oh, that's kind of dope. In some ways, I really do feel that this shouldn't be a trend. This should be a value of, of, of what it is that we're seeking for in the world that we're seeking for. Um, so I think for me is that I'm just really happy to see that more people are paying attention. I think it's inevitable to turn your head around and not know that this COVID-19, this pandemic, this economic crisis, this um, racial reckoning that's happening in the world is impacting different people in a different way. You know, we're not, um, we don't have equal access to all of the things that we're fighting for and that's why we're fighting for it. Um, and if, the art can help contribute to making that message stronger and to make those voices louder, then I think we're doing our job. Yes, that's Absolutely. right. Thank you, Cece. Yeah. Um, Chemist, you wanna talk about if any- <laughs> You said it's probably as popular as, uh, look, I feel it, look, conscious rap. Look, everyone's right. conscious of rap, everyone's a conscious rapper now. It's crazy, I feel you on that too, it's like, okay. I hope it's not a trend. I see that it's marketable now, but it's mm -hmm. popping up in a lot of, even plant medicine is popular now, right? People have been practicing plant medicine for years. And and, and yeah. now, it, you know, Big Pharma's trying to get involved. So now the narrative is shifting. So it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Yeah. But I think that it's also kind of speaks to the movement around, and actually more so the power of people like you know that we have people power to transform the narrative right and so we are transforming the narrative like bad example <laughs> but y'all know mcdonald's didn't used to sell salads but now they do because people want salads but they oh, sell it right. because you know people want to buy it people because they want to sell it should i say you know what i'm saying it's a bad example but you know what i'm saying it's not like you know you can't really have like drive-through revolution it doesn't really work that way so it has to go a little bit deeper right it's not like a you know Quick, quick fix. There isn't a quick fix to this process, and I think that that's actually what's beautiful around the movement is that it's allowing people to like step into the space, and then now we now we have now that we got your attention, now let's really go deeper to the transformation process. Now let's really transform our hearts and our minds and our institutions so that they really reflect the justice that we want, that we know. And I think that's beautiful element of the power that we have to be able to manifest that. So. Yeah, I definitely felt really lucky because the whole time that I was in school and I was working on all these projects that nobody really understood, I didn't, I honestly didn't expect in my lifetime that I would see a point where everybody was suddenly talking about this. Like, I just kind of expected, okay, I'll just keep working on stuff like this for the rest of my life and maybe people won't be on board, but there'll always just be a black community. And I was like, I feel very blessed that, you know, I'm only 23 and I, I'm already seeing like this whole country starting to have this narrative because I just, I never expected that to happen like in my lifetime. Yeah, thanks. It, it's funny, it, it kind of segues in, in, into our, our, cause you know, we, we've had conversations, uh, the collective that we spoke on, uh, Spirit Works, Oakland, I remember, um, Black Cultural Zone, Museum. RBA Creative, Museum. and the museum, the uh, Oakland Museum, you know, we had a vision of what would an exhibit look like, right? Kind of like a living exhibit, living museum kind of vibe. That's just our vision. I'm, I'm curious to know what y'all would like to see with, with your art. Like what is, you know, and that's actually one of the questions in here. What would you like to see with the mural? What would you like? So if you once the panels come down, what, what would you like to happen with them? Speaking to the panels in particular, I think, because of course, you know, some of the art is already permanent, it's on the wall. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to the panels in particular. What would you I definitely to would love to see it in some kind of uh, living museum or even, you know, if if it was auctioned for charity. Um, I Like, I just, I wanna make sure that it ends up somewhere where people aren't having to like pay a bunch of money to go in and see it. Um, after the murals were painted, 
uh, this little group called the artists, the People's Artists Alliance, sort of like gathered a bunch of us together to figure out like what we're going to do with them. And I was being contacted by people who wanted to buy the mural, and it was just like really confusing. But one thing we kind of all agreed on is we want to make sure that it's still it's not in some museum that nobody can afford to go into. It's still available for people to see. And if it is gonna be sold, that the money goes to like back into the black artist's hands. One more time for the people in the back. When we all repeat, we, we definitely, I, I want the philanthropic ears to hear this. I want people to hear this, right? That this is this is coming from the artist, y'all. This is what the artists want. The yeah. same spirit works, the same, no third party. This is coming from the artist's mouth. Don't try to buy my art piece, lock it up, and now it's inaccessible to the people. Right. Like that's the you know, that's uh, I heard it right here at uh seven thirty one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, anybody else? Like, what what would you like? What would you like done? Like, and like you say, as we're thinking about possibilities and aspirations, right? From an aspirational place, what would you like done with with this art with these murals? I know for the, the artwork that um, I've done and the artwork that the, the young folks that came down from East Oakland uh, with me to do, um, I would like it for, to be like in East Oakland, be in a community where we don't get a lot of artwork, we don't get a lot of those um, those visual uh, cues or, or visual distinctions between like what is quote unquote art and what is not. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, people respect our art, so to speak, in these moments. But where were you for the last 25, 30 years that you know I've been doing this? So um, from risking my freedom, uh, almost getting killed, being beat by police, like these are the things that actually happen with the artwork that I do. So like for me personally, on a personal level, being able to actually do this this artwork without having to run from police, without having to get you know shot at and stuff like that, um, I'm in a, a unique situation where now like the platform is switched and, and I'm heard from these same audiences that used to chase us. So I would prefer that the places where I got chased at, the places where, you know, th that artwork is not really relegated to, um, I would prefer it to be there. I also would like it for a lot of, well, if not all, but a lot of the local nonprofit organizations would actually retain that work, um, especially folks like, you know, the Sankofa Projects with Spirit Works. I think like certain places where, you know, you see black folks um, congregating and actually building on culture and like showing the vast definition of what blackness is versus this homogenized one. I would just want my artwork to be in those type of spaces. You know what I mean? I want it to be in spaces where, you know, sex exploited minors and, and other folks that have to, you know, that are forced in situations um, in the street, that they would be able to see something like that instead of seeing blight uh, in those conditions. So, you know, in East Oakland, we got, you know, just a lot of different levels of bullshit that we deal with. And I just, I would love to see the aesthetics change. Um, and I know that hopefully if the aesthetics change, then the situation may as well. So for me, that's, you know, kind of what I've centered on. Um, and I like what Black Cultural Zone is doing with how they're actually housing it. So for me, if I can see more Black and Brown um, faces holding that, you know, if Southeast Asian folks can actually have their artwork, you know, I mean, that would be, you know, my 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 wish. Dope. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, brother. Yeah, man, like diet is everything, right? I think diet ain't just what you eat. Like, what's your visual diet? What's your audio diet? You know what I'm saying? What are we, what's your... I don't know emotional diet. Mm -hmm. like, like, I gotta look. I'm trying to find that word. I guess it would be emotion. Yeah. Like what? What do we? You know, on an emotional level, what are we intaking day to day? Is it more I hate yous or more I love yous? Whether it be from you know verbal or nonverbal. So I think that's so important. What you said, brother. Can we just get rid of some of the blight? Because mm -hmm. there's so many lots in East Oakland, man. We could just pop up beautiful things. Um, all kind it's of gardens. All, yeah, it's, it's, it's here. It's here. I ain't even gonna say it's not happening. It's happening. Big ups to the Black Cultural Zone, all the collaborative, what, 30 plus collaborative partners mm -hmm. that are just really pushing and pushing and pushing. I do want to give a shout out to my brother Lauren Taylor, District Six. I mean, definitely, you know, I know you know, saying what we want about politicians, but I guarantee you with my heart that that brother is definitely putting his best effort and intention and to revitalize the District 6, and, and I stand by that, you know, for sure. I've had many conversations with the brother and um, has definitely followed through on everything he said. Yeah. So um, I'm just thankful to have an ally in the, in the East right now uh, that's, that, that's uh, riding with the people. Yeah. So. Cece, did you want to uh, <clears throat> speak to about what you want to see with any of the panels that you've worked on, or Rachel, either one of you two? 
Go ahead, Cece. Yeah. Um, to be honest, when we were creating it, I mean, we were kind of in the moment and just, I mean, when I was creating it, I, I didn't really think of like, what is supposed to happen afterwards. We were kind of speaking of the moment. Um, and I mean, I kind of echo some of what um, folks have already said in terms of having it be accessible to the very people who, would, who it's made for. Um, I do know though, I mean, one thing that kind of adds a little bit of conflict is that it's on plywood. So it's longevity and its lifetime does have a limitation. So knowing just, I mean, you know, folks have called it a very historic moment, historic art, and I, I, and I believe that and I, I really do think it is. Um, just kind of trying to figure out what is the best way to be able to have it like publicly accessible for the very audience who was man, meant and created for, but how can we preserve this beyond this year, beyond next year, and you know, 10 years from now, um, just because of, of the actual materials and what it is and, and just really kind of thinking about that too. And I don't necessarily have the answer for that. Well, we got you back a little bit. So we've committed a spirit works to house all the art at our facility in East Oakland. For now. For yeah. now, um, we're, you know, just as an uh, emergency measure, because that was the question. We didn't want them just out in the street getting, you know, getting into the rainy season. Yeah. Uh, there's an organization by the name of ATAL. Um, I believe that's the acronym. Um, and they are, they specialize from my understanding in preserving art. So we're actually working with them to see more of a preservation process. Um, because you're absolutely right. Like, what does the preservation side look like? Yeah. And I think that's where, uh, I'm thankful for the collaboration with the Oakland Museum and uh, some of the conversations we've been having with them and our resources as well. So um, even if you have any uh, connections, sis, let us know. You know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, just, just you're, you're a part of the team now. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we all, we all are, we all connected through email. So let's, let's, let's work. I mean, maybe it's a, a building that we buy. Right. Or, or that the city buys. And then, and it's all, you know, it's, it's a permanent museum now. Yeah. you know with the, with all of these things if we're gonna dream big so this is for all the the, the long money on the line you know what i'm saying <laughs> all y'all that want something to do we don't know how to support we got visions y'all we got dreams support support the people you know what i'm saying um i want to say oh so rachel you mentioned about because uh, there was a question in here about um cross um i guess cross state line collaboration like national collaboration so it sounds like so this group in D.C., um, are, are they just specifically in D.C.? Are there people coming from around the nation to do this? <clears throat> they they are specifically based out of D.C. Um, it's a group of Black female lawyers who are getting this project together um, with another crew of artists who recommended me for, for this. Um, so just, you know, I think that's the magic of Instagram these days is that you can be a fan and connect and, you know, have like these little friendships with people um, that you don't even know yet. So um, that's what gotcha. happened. Um, but I think it's important, you know, and I also find like, oh man, I just wanted to say, I agree with every single one of you about the panels too. I'm like, yes, wait, yes, <laughs> wait, yes. Let's let's buy a building and let's have a museum in the deep east. Like, hell yeah, you know. And I heard about a little bit about what's going on in Eastmont, and it's dope to hear more about that. So, um, I'm really with that. That it does, yeah, it needs to be preserved and um, and all that, and that it needs to be in the right neighborhood. But um, I digress. Uh, you know, the national push for this is is um. I mean, it's really across the world. So, yeah, I think pushing those opportunities, thinking bigger and bigger about how we can all, all of our stories connect. Yeah. I would actually love, speaking of which, I would actually love to invite y'all out to the Black Cultural Zone. I think we have, how many more blank panels we have? We, we have some, some blank panels that need some love. You know, say that if y'all got time and capacity, uh, I believe there's a stipend as well, you know, for your time. So, um, we could talk about that either through email or a little later. So, we'd love to, we'd love for some of y'all love in that space because it's, it's it's an energy when you walk in there, John. That's why you're smiling, John. You know what I'm talking about. It's an energy up in there, y'all. 
And once again, a common market on Sundays. Uh, that's, the, that's the farmer's market in East Oakland. Um, this beautiful space that we're trying to create up there. Not trying, but actively creating and, and actively expanding and actively breathing life into. So yeah. um, for the people, by the people. Yeah. Oh, she's frozen. So Cece I think Cece got frozen. frozen. My God. Oh, we can still I'm hear back. you. Yeah, I'm back. He was frozen. <laughs> Not anymore. Did you want to jump into that question or maybe around some international collaboration before we close out? Um, you was frozen and I'm, I'm good now, but thank you. Now, as far as national and international collaboration, I mean, with our Trust Your Struggle crew, I mean, that's something that I think we really take pride in. Um, we do, we used to do annual tours. Um, we've gone through Latin America, we've gone in Asia, and we've gone through across the United States um, to partner with organizations that share similar mission and values that we do. Um, we haven't done it more, most recently, but it's something that the younger members um, who have just now come in definitely do want to reignite. And, and <clears throat> there's something really amazing and special in just seeing what other folks are doing um, in the other side of the world and also in the other side of the country. And it's really humbling. And, and knowing that there's so much folks, um, Blaine, I know you were talking about like really expanding your community. There's so much folks out there. And I think that um, it's, it's, it's such a privilege to be able to collaborate with folks in different parts of the world. You learn so much. Um, based on just what they have access to in the materials, what is their perspective and point of view of, of where we're at now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not always, um, especially at this time, it's not necessarily always as easily possible. It's not that easy possible. I mean, I, traveling right now is, is a, a bit limiting. <laughs> Um, so, but definitely is, is something that I'm hoping to kind of continue doing maybe in the later future. Um, but right now I think I'm staying put, I'm staying put in Oakland. Um, uh, -oh, I think we lost you, Cece. I'm glad you're here staying put, doing the work that you're doing, <laughs> traveling, connecting, all of that. It's real, right? That's real. That's what's happening. There you go. So as we close out. Um, oh, thank you, Cece. Thank you. As we close out, I just want to um, ask if folks would just really quickly share um, how can folks get in contact with you, and then we'll do our final uh, little gratitude moment um, as we close out. This has been a, a brilliant conversation that I'm just really uh, inspired by and say um, that there's so much uh, that can come from this, and uh, so we're just excited. But in the meantime, how can people get in contact with you if they want to know more about your art, if they want to commission you to do works? Um, how can people can connect? So we'll do with chem we'll do chemist, Rachel, Blaine, and Cece. So people can connect with me on Instagram, uh, at chemist510. You can see a lot of my art there. Um, you can also go to Insta Instagram to chemistry art. Um, that's chemistry, K-E-M-E-S-T-R-Y. Um, and I think it's a bottom score with art. Let me just make sure I got that right. Um, no, it's actually chemistry.art. Um, my son makes my pages. I'm not really a social media person. Um, he's trying to make me one. Um, and then I also have a website, uh, chemistry life, K E M E S T R Y L Y P H dot com. And you can go there and see some of my art as well. All right. Thank you, Rachel. I know I just had to pull up my phone. I was like, what is my handle? <laughs> um, so you can find me, you can email me at uh, wolfpack.murals at gmail.com. So wolfpack is W-O-L-F-E-P-A-C-K dot murals at gmail. And then my um, Instagram is wolf, W-O-L-F-E underscore dot pack. P-A-C-K. Thank you, thank you. Blaine and then Cece. Uh, yeah, so I, I have a bunch of different <laughs> websites, but my Instagram handle is art underscore Blaine, B-L-A-N-E, and then my store is artblaine.store, 
And then there's a link to my illustration portfolio there. And then I have all of my industrial design work at blaine.design. Um, I keep my simple, it's just my name, one word, CC Carpio <laughs> at Instagram and CC Carpio at Gmail. So I also have a website to see some of my other work. But yeah, no, I mean, I think I'm like trying to look at my phone, trying to look y'all up already so I could follow y'all. <laughs> but yeah, looking forward to actually seeing you more around town and potentially collaborating at some point or another. And Blaine, when you get tired of Treasure Island, just roll on over. <laughs> There's <laughs> folks in Oakland. Yes, are. yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But well, this has been beautiful, y'all. Um, I think in classic spirit works fashion. Let's just close out with a with a word of gratitude. You know, what are you thankful for in this moment? Um, you know, what's bringing you joy in this moment? And let's do it in reverse. We're gonna start with you, CC, and go backwards. Um, I love seeing beautiful, creative people doing the work. <laughs> and it's great to be in Oakland and in the Bay, knowing that there's plenty of us doing it. It just makes me feel like we're on our path and we're on our purpose and there's a lot of folks sharing it with us. So it's beautiful. We're, we're, we're almost there. We're halfway there. Yes, yes, yes. Ashe, thank Ashe. you. <clears throat> Our Blaine, Rachel, then chemist. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just... I'm just really grateful because I didn't really get to talk to people about art until very recently. So yeah, I'm just really grateful to, to Mizan for emailing me and um, also like to Sunai for always telling me about new stuff that's going on and just like everybody in Oakland that's like, just like giving me a sense of community that uh, I honestly don't think I've ever felt it living in San Francisco. So I'm really appreciative for that. Nice. Shameless plug, you know, Sanai Madal Futura, that's my oldest son. So word up. <laughs> yep, yep. Go ahead, Rachel. I'm thankful for him too, but that's not what I was doing. I'm just plugging. <laughs> Go ahead, Rachel. What you thankful for? I'm I'm thankful to be surrounded by amazing creators with powerful voices um, on a mission, all working together in this moment. Um, it's something I've like dreamed could possibly happen ever, you know. And and the fact that um, that that we're that we have this opportunity to use our voices and our collective strength together. Um, is really beautiful. Um, I give thanks to the ancestors for all of their sacrifices uh, to allow us to be here. Um, and, you know, I'm grateful to be able to continue the legacy of the struggle and the fight for justice. Um, and I'm grateful for this conversation with all of you. Word, Ashe. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, uh, well, I would like to give thanks for everyone on the panel, for sure. Um, it's always powerful to be in great spirits and great minds. Um, definitely give thanks for the ancestors for the Black Arts Movement. Um, without them, I don't think that my direction in terms of where I'm going with what I'm showing the youth would be in that same vein. So um, definitely want to give thanks to them, especially Brother Amiri, who's not here, rest in power. Um, definitely want to give thanks to the Third World Struggle. Um, there's a lot of folks uh, that have been fighting this fight way before us and going to be fighting after us, unfortunately. So definitely want to give for, uh, thanks to BAM, uh, to that whole movement. Definitely a dope movement for the community and for, for just murals in general. Um, give thanks for Sister Blaine just just popping up uh, right on time. Um, and also mentioning uh, Sinai. Um, that's a very, very young a uh, soldier we have in the world that we need, uh, and I appreciate him as well. But more importantly, I just want to give thanks for Mizan and Sway. Uh, they're pillars in our community. Uh, they make sure that we stand on what we believe in and we stand on our word, and they make sure we stand with our ancestors and all that we do. So just give thanks, Ashe. Love y'all children, and I hope to see you soon. Word up, y'all. Thanks, John. Humble by that, King. I appreciate mm -hmm. that, brother. Just trying to do the best and really reflect your light. You know what I'm saying? And in, in, in the light of all of y'all on this uh, screen. And I think it's uh, more of a door opening as far as our relationship. I see, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of each other in the future. Yeah. At least that's my hope. 
And um, would love for y'all. Um, we're actually going to be activating the Sankofa project on November 1st. Uh, so I would love for y'all to come out if you're able. It's our uh, living museum over at East Oakland. And it's, in essence, an uh, African history timeline, starting from uh, antiquity, and it brings you all the way to East Mount Mall. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where that's where you end up. And, um, you know, it starts with a, a pre-brief and a debrief, uh, kind of to integrate kind of what you saw, just really, you know, see what's what's next, man. Where, where are we going from here? Um, so uh, definitely inviting y'all out there and y'all all on the list. And if you, <laughs> if you want more information about the Black Culture Zone, you can go to the Black Culture Zone uh, at both Instagram as well as dot com for the website. Uh, Spirit Works is also there. Spirit Works is S P E A R I T W U R X um, uh, dot com for our website. And then Spirit Works Oakland for our IG, also on Facebook as well, even though I feel like that's maybe getting a little outdated, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. We still rolling with it. Um, but we just really thankful for this collaboration. Thankful for all the folks on the line, Joelle, Taylor, uh, Lori, Jean, Randolph, all the folks who helped to make this um, this event happen. Emily, uh, Emily uh, all the good folks uh, with the Oakland Museum, Oakland Art Murmur, Black Cultural Zone, RBA Creative. We're giving thanks for each one of y'all who tuned in, who might watch the replay a little later. We're giving thanks for life, y'all. This is the moment. This is the time. We are in it right now. For whatever, y'all. The time is now. And we're giving thanks to your support because I know you. I'm, I'm making eye contact with you right now <laughs> because I know you. You're going you're gonna to be so inspired by watching this that you're going to want to get in contact with Rachel and Cece and everybody. Just treat my family right. That's all I'm saying. Come at them right. You already heard what they want. You already heard how we want to move. So support us in, in really creating this narrative national and, and really pushing this art and, and 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 this transformation across this nation, y'all. So so give thanks. Yeah. Um, we out, y'all. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Peace.